the effectiveness of a ship is directly proportional to the efficiency of the men who man the ship. Efficiency of the men in turn depends not only on their training, their discipline, and their leadership, but in great measure on their living conditions. Because many of today's ships lack the facilities which provide good habitability and thus provide highest efficiency, Commander Operational Development Force was ordered to make an evaluation of shipboard living conditions. Conditions were studied on all the major types of ships. The reports indicated that much improvement could be made in existing ships. By giving habitability consideration commensurate with the consideration given other military characteristics. To explore this concept, it was decided to make experimental changes in the living accommodations of an existing ship to see what could be done to improve habitability. Representatives of the forces afloat, Bureau of Ships, the Norfolk Naval Shipyard, and a well-known industrial designer met to work out detailed plans for improving the various berthing, messing, and sanitation compartments on a 692-class destroyer. Surveys indicated serious overcrowding. Studies were made to see if the crew could be reduced by more efficient utilization of each man. The type commander cut the personnel allowance on a trial basis. This made more room and more facilities available for each man. Total reduction amounted to 37 persons, officers, CPOs, and enlisted men. The ship's effectiveness was not expected to be reduced because better living conditions would make each man more efficient. The Meredith was scheduled for regular overhaul and a 3-inch 50 gun conversion and was selected for habitability improvements on an experimental basis. When the Meredith tied up, the berthing spaces were like this. Very crowded, very inconvenient lockers. No readily available place to store personal belongings. Peacoats and foul weather clothing were hung wherever space was available. There was no room and no facilities for recreation. The comfort of many of the berths were diminished by the glare of hot lights and the projection of valves and pipes from the overhead. The poor arrangement of the bunks made traffic flow slow and difficult. Crew's berthing compartment A304L was laid out like this. 48 men lived here. Not only was it crowded, but it was very difficult to get to the ladder at Reveille and General Quarters. Most critical bottleneck existed here, where 33 men had to pass when clearing the compartment. Redesign produced a more efficient layout, further improved by reducing the number of personnel assigned to the compartment. A304L now looks like this. Note how the removal of a few men and the rearrangement and redecoration have improved the appearance. The bulkheads are painted a gray beige, and the compartment is pleasantly illuminated by fluorescent lights. Foam neoprene mattresses improve the comfort of the berths. The stanchions make a more orderly appearance than the chains of the old type berths. The drawer type transom locker can be used without disturbing the occupants of the berths. New utility screens give the men some privacy and make it easy for them to get at some of their often used items. In addition to their transom lockers, new upright lockers supply more storage space for each man. Three men share each one. The top space is for their peacoats and uniforms, and each man has an individual drawer below. The locker itself and the door is ventilated. Bars provide for drying damp towels and other small laundry items. The redesign now permits some recreation space. An upholstered transom, several tables. This chief's messing compartment originally was designed to be twice this size. 
Then, additional military equipment was installed and caused overcrowding, a condition not conducive to pleasant meals or relaxation. An opening behind this locker was the only passageway for over 20 of the crew to pass back and forth to their berthing compartment directly below the chief's quarters. Relocation of a hatch permitted the men to go to their compartment without walking through the chief's quarters. And the rearrangement and redecoration of the quarters made them brighter and more comfortable, although a little smaller. The after CPO quarters were encroached on by the installation of this ammo hoist for the new 3 inch 50 center line mount. Two officers were crowded into this bunk room and three more in an adjacent room just like it. Not very satisfactory for sleeping or working. On the blueprint, the officer's quarters looked like this. Notice that the passageway took up much valuable space. The redesign made use of the passageway and permitted separation of bunks from space for office work and recreation. The space now is improved both for sleep and for work. Interior decorating by color of paint and other means adds much to the attractiveness of these quarters. The captain's cabin was improved by relocation of a door and the installation of a more utilitarian desk. A transom type berth was also installed to replace the old berth. It doubles as a settee for the captain's official and personal guests. The Meredith's messing system was far from efficient Traffic was confused and further complicated by mess cooks using the same ladder as they replenished the food from the deck above. Part of the traffic problem was solved by installation of a dumb waiter to bring food down from the galley. Worst tie-up was at the ladder where the line had to turn 180 degrees, pick up utensils, make other sharp turns, and pass down the serving table. Immediate improvement was made by reversing the ladder and moving the serving table. This permitted rearrangement of furnishings so that there was room for the dumb waiter, an ice cream freezer, and a hardening cabinet. The line makes a smooth turn now to get to the serving table and moves with less confusion. The galley was rearranged on an experimental basis better ventilation was provided. Although 88 seats were provided in the old messing compartment, many of them were very difficult to reach and therefore were not used. Studies showed that never more than 53 seats were in use at any one time. In redesigning the compartment, only 56 seats were provided. However, small tables replace the long tables, and all seats are accessible. No longer is there an institutional appearance. Each man has a wider table frontage and more elbow room. Backs on the seats provide additional comfort. The lighting and coloring of the bulkheads tend to make unnoticeable the extraneous gear, such as ducting, ammunition hoists, and the like. All furnishings are colorful. Tables pearl gray and yellow gray. Transoms blue. Seats beige. Bulkheads beige. Deck terracotta. The keynote is cheerfulness. Better appetites for the good food supplied. The men no longer have to scrape their trays. Redesign of the scullery permits them to leave them here for disposal of scraps in the garbage grinder. A piano is installed to enhance the use of the compartment for recreation after messing hours. The smaller tables are more adaptable to recreational pursuits than are the old eight and ten man tables. This is the redecorated and rearranged wardroom. Better lighting, new color scheme, tan and green drapes, attractive table lamps, a smaller, more utilitarian sideboard and a narrower table, all making for an air of spaciousness and comfort. The sanitary facilities on the Meredith were overcrowded. Ratios were changed so that now there is one lavatory for 15 men 
and one shower for 32 men. On the plans, it looked like this. Water closets, urinals, wash basins, and shower, all in one steamy, smelly compartment. Rearrangement and a bulkhead permitted division of the head from the washroom facilities. Experiences like this tended to reduce human dignity. To correct this deficiency, screens were installed, permitting a degree of privacy hitherto unknown. As an experiment, towel drying facilities were provided in the forward washroom by installation of this bank of newly designed lockers. The doors are removable so that toilet articles stowed in the door may be taken out and placed conveniently for use. In the towel space, continual circulating air dries the towels after use. You have seen some of the improvements which can be made in living conditions aboard existing ships. The improvements made are not as perfect as desired for two reasons. First, many cable runs. Pipelines and vent ducts are economically unfeasible to relocate. And second, the experimental nature of the job permitted such deficiencies as these to remain. A scuttle in a main passageway to trip hurrying feet. A petcock suspended from the overhead. Even a five foot ten inch sailor is too tall here. Lockers which are still inadequate to stow all of a man's gear. Soiled laundry storages of inadequate capacity. In spite of these defects, the Meredith experiment has already shown that much can be done to improve living conditions on ships now in commission. The Meredith experiment has not exploited all possibilities for improvement. Studies and investigations have shown that much more can be done. Judicious consideration must be given to the removal of equipments which do not support the mission of the ship. And the removal of equipment like this torpedo dolly, which takes up space and weight out of proportion to its value to the ship. Even though the appearance and arrangement of the living spaces have improved, they are still excessively hot. Because of the heat, some men prefer to sleep on deck Temperature control of some sort must be installed if human efficiency is to be high during the summer months and during tropic operations. Installing mechanical cooling will not only improve human efficiency, but will also increase the resistance of the ship to contamination from atomic, biological, and chemical attacks. The experiment to improve shipboard living conditions has not only improved efficiency, but it has also improved morale. In an evaluation of the conversion on the Meredith, members of the crew said, Well, it's like this. It's a lot easier to hang on to your chow when you don't have to hang on to a chair. It's a 200% improvement. Well, at last we have a place where we can sit down and relax. That linoleum stuff on the deck instead of bare steel is great. Yeah, the Navy is really trying to do something for us. Giving living conditions the consideration commensurate with other military characteristics will result in improved efficiency of the men and thus in improved effectiveness of their ship.